Welcome to the Over 40 Alpha Podcast with your host, Funk Roberts. We are live. We are live. We are live, people. And welcome to the Over 40 Alpha Podcast. This is episode number 30. And this is the episode that will birth a new year uh, and a new format or an added format for the Over 40 Alpha podcast. So I'm really excited for this episode and really excited for where the podcast will be going in the future. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Funk Roberts. I'm a former professional athlete turned a metabolic master metabolic trainer, Amazon bestseller, certified strength and conditioning coach for fighters. And uh, I'm also an online transformation specialist for men over 40, 50, 60, helping men in their over 40s, 50s, 60s, get in the best shape of their lives through nutrition, workouts, mindset training, uh, boosting testosterone naturally, recovery, everything that embodies uh, helping men get into the best shape of their lives in their 40s, 50s, 60s, living better in your second, in the next 40 years than you did in the first. So welcome. This is what this, all, this, is what this podcast is all about, helping men get in the best shape of their lives, best, best health of their lives. And thank you so much for spending your time with me. As I mentioned before, this is episode number 30. And in this episode, we are going to discuss the best diet, the best nutrition plan for men over 40 in 2020. What is the nutrition plan you should use in 2020 that's going to help you lose weight, it's going to help you burn belly fat. It's going to help you increase your energy, uh, you know, increase your metabolism, better your health, and naturally increase your testosterone levels. And that's what we're going to discuss today. And I'm excited about that because, you know, moving into the new year, nutrition is everything. Nutrition is key. You know, you cannot train a bad diet. But before we get to that, I'm, I'm excited because, like I said, this is a new era of Over 40 Alpha podcast. This is the era of the video. So we're adding a video. I've got a new podcast management team. Big up to to Luis Luis Diaz and his crew. And we're not only um, offering audio but also video. So you may be watching this right now on YouTube, and you may not even be over forty. You may not even be a man, but it doesn't matter because the information here, uh, you know, you can use. There's some things you may pick and choose and learn. Right? It's all about knowledge. So I'm excited. But the one thing I want to start off this year off with and hooking you guys up with is a contest. And uh, like I said, we're just relaunching this. So I decided to uh, have a contest. And uh, in 2020, we're going to kick off the year. We're doing a podcast listener giveaway where you're going to have a chance to win one of three. We're giving away three of my number one protein powder. This is Lean Pro 30. This is my New Zealand way grass-fed protein, cleanest protein. This is literally the best protein on the market, period. Uh, everyone who, who uses it, loves it, um, you know, they live by it. <laughs> they, buy, they buy this in, the, in you know, the bunches. It's incredible. But it's a perfect protein for men over 40. And if you're listening to this, that's how we're going to kick off this year. One uh, th three people are going to win uh, either the vanilla or chocolate. It comes in both. And why would you want this Lean Pro? Let me quickly tell you, first of all, what Lean Pro is and then how you can win this, uh, win yours. Get, get shipped right to you. You don't have to pay for anything. It'll just get shipped to your door and you can start using it. So this is my Lean Pro 30. This is a, a protein that we re-engineered from scratch. Right, so I didn't want you know all the I didn't want all the all the negative side effects you get from using protein powders, all the sugar, all the fillers, getting bloated, like all that stuff, even putting on weight. So I decided uh, I stopped using protein powders for a while, but I decided, hey man, I need to create my own something that I live um, by, something that I want to use, and something that's going to help me get the results I'm looking for. So this is New Zealand way grass fed protein. So it's grass fed. There's no hormones. It's uh, and one of the things that we did, we added a probiotic formula called BC30, Canadian BC30. And research shows that when you add BC30 to protein, um, you will have 23% better synthesis, protein synthesis, which means it's going to get to where it needs to go 23% better than if you just had the protein. Because it's very hard to digest protein, specifically these days. Uh, you know, with, with uh, our gut, unhealthy guts and, and, and 
what you and what uh, what have what have you. It's very hard to even though you're getting in you know 28 grams of protein, really how much of that is actually getting to where it needs to go. So adding the probiotic ensures that that gets there. Plus, it it helps with digestion too. Probiotics great for digestion. It's lactose free, stevia sweetened, so there's no sugar. It's uh, gluten free, soy free. Good for men because we gotta get rid of that soy. Lactose free, so if so, I'm lactose intolerant. So this is one of the big things for me. I needed to make this lactose free so that um, I don't get all the again negative side effects that you get when if you're lactose intolerant. Non-GMO. Um, and here's a couple of other things about this. A, the taste is incredible. Like chocolate, vanilla, the taste is unbelievable. Anyone who talks about this talks about how it's just specifically delicious. It mixes well. And here's the uh, last two things. There's 20 grams of protein per scoop. So you pick up, get that scoop, throw it in there, 20 grams of protein. And there's 93% protein with each scoop. So a lot of times you're not going to get the, probably, I don't know any other protein powder on the market that has that high quality protein, 93% protein. Um, the 6% of that is, uh, the other 6% is the probiotics, of course, and the 1% is the, uh, the sweet, the stevia. And so, you're getting 93% protein, very pure. There's no added fillers or anything. So when you get this and you take this, not only is it going to digest well, not only are you not going to get bloated, not only does it taste good, but it's, uh, you know, you're getting high quality protein, New Zealand whey grass fed protein. So Lean Pro is amazing. Once you have it, once you get it, once you try it, you never go back, 100%. You never go back. Anyway, so one of you three people listening to this is going to win this. So how do you win Lean Pro 30? How do you win that? Well, what I need you to do, excuse me, is go to uh, www.over40shred.com slash contest. Okay, so forward slash contest. Click that link and in on that page, you're going to fill out the information. You're going to put your name and email address or just email address. Okay, so it's two steps. Step one, go to over40shred.com slash contest. Click the link go or, or get to that page. Put your email address in, and then on the very next page, I need you to go click the link on that page and leave a review for the podcast. The review is very, very important for us because we want to continue to grow this podcast. We want to get amazing people on this podcast. Um, so we need good reviews. So I need you to leave a review. So for those of you who leave that review, you will be uh, you will be uh, el- eligible to win. The Lean Pro 30. So really, really important. So it's two steps. Click, go to over40shred.com slash contest. Put your email address in. Next page, you click the link on the next page and go and leave a, a, a good, positive, <laughs> positive uh, review. And then again, this is 100% free to enter for all podcast li- listeners. And this goes on until January 31st. So there's going to be a few podcast episodes that you have chances for. So the more reviews you leave, the better it is, the better your chances are to win. And again, it'll be one of three lucky winners. All right. So there you go. That's, that's, that's how we're kicking off 2020, man. We're kicking off 2020 with contests. And there's going to be, this is going to be a new era of the Over 40 Alpha podcast. And listen, for those of you who just want to get grabbed the uh, Lean Pro, there's a lot of you who are listening right now are like, you know what? I don't even want to wait for the contest. I, you sold me on this. This is amazing. And I want you to go to over40shred.com forward slash protein. And that'll take you to the Lean Pro page and grab your Lean Pro, man. It's amazing. It's on sale right now. So get it, grab it, go get it. All right, so let's talk about the best diet. Let's talk about what's going on with nutrition and how you guys are doing with your 2020, um, you know, fitness resolutions or goals or what have you. You know, one of the things for men over 40, one of our biggest hurdles is what to eat, when to eat, and how much to eat. You know, that's something that I hear all the time. Fonk, what, you know, what should I eat for, you know, my to lose belly fat? What should I eat for, you know, um, you know, to lose weight? You know, how can I boost my, my testosterone levels, you know, without having to take, you know, TRT or what have you, you know, nutrition, the workouts are are pretty much the easy part. You know, you can figure out the workouts. Um, you know, you get some HIIT training or metabolic training, joint friendly training, go to the gym, you know, do, do, do full total body, full body workouts every time you go and you get that, but you cannot train a bad diet. You know, so it doesn't matter how many times you go to the, the gym, how many workouts you do a day, how long you run. If your diet's, uh, if you're not eating the right foods um, to support your 
your workouts, then you're never going to get results. Never. doesn't matter. We're, especially, especially in our 40s, 50s, and 60s. Especially in our 40s, 50s, and 60s. Because we just, we're just not, we don't have the, the capability. Our bodies don't have the capability. There's a lot going on in our bodies. There's a lot going on with our body that, um, you know, we need to be aware of. Right. And um, so let me just start with with some of the things that uh, I'm just going to get some notes here. Listen, when it comes to nutrition, when, listen, just let's let me back up for a second. Let me back up for a second. When it comes to us guys in our 40s, 50s, 60s, there's a, there's a lot of things that are going on right now in our body that we need to address. But if we address this one thing, then every the byproduct will be what you want, whether it's weight loss belly fat loss, more energy, better mood, et cetera. That all is to do with our number one hormone, which is testosterone. Not even a question, right? Testosterone, that's it. It's all about testosterone. Um, and when you think about testosterone, you're probably thinking, you know, oh, you're going to be ripped and big and jacked and, you know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger and, you know, all this stuff. And that, that's, that's, yes, that's a sliver of the byproduct of having a lot of testosterone, at some at some points in your life, depending on how much testosterone you have, remember those those bodybuilders and guys who you're seeing with tons of testosterone are, you know, they're they're using uh, you know testosterone or 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 steroids or whatever it is. So you got to be very weary about you know who you're looking at and who you're comparing to when you're talking about testosterone. Uh, the other thing about about testosterone is it's our number one male hormone. It's what makes us a man. We need testosterone. Testosterone. When you have low testosterone. The number one indicator for me, if I'm looking, if I'm walking on the street and I see someone and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I see this guy and I look at him and he's got a belly. If you have a belly, 100% you have low testosterone, not even a question. So some of the indicators, belly fat, low testosterone, um, low sex drive, right? You have a low sex drive. Of course, that, that just makes sense because testosterone is made in t- our testicles. That makes sense. You're going to have, um, you know, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have low energy. Um, you're gonna have a lot muscle loss, so uh, a natural loss of muscle. Basically, what happens, and that's not really the more the testosterone than it is sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is a natural loss of muscle that happens when we're when we reach probably in our late 30s, specifically in our 40s. We naturally lose muscle mass. So if we don't, if we're naturally losing muscle mass and our testosterone levels are low. That's a that's a that's a recipe for disaster. But you also get things like depression, fatigue. You're always tired. You're always depressed. You have no motivation. Um, you know, you get bone loss. You get mood change. You get hair loss. You get memory loss. All the health issues that come along with not having high testosterone. You probably not. You're not. You're probably not correlating the fact that. All of these things are happening, hot flashes, problems with sleeping, you know, obviously difficulty with, with your erection, lack of motivation. A lot of these things that are happening to us in our 40s, 50s, and 60s, you're probably not correlating it to the fact that you, your testosterone levels are low. You're probably correlating to the fact that, oh, I'm just getting older, or, you know, I don't know what's happening, or, you know, maybe I have some this thing or this thing that I'm watching on CNN every time there's there, do you suffer from this and this and this then take this drug or take this drug when truly the number one thing you need to be focusing on is naturally improving your testosterone naturally increasing your testosterone you know right now in our in in modern day right now in 2020 t- testosterone levels of men are the lowest it's ever been in in modern day history so think about that. Testosterone is the lowest. Like research is showing that testosterone is the lowest among all men, let alone men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. All men, it's the lowest it's ever been. How can that be the lowest it's ever been? With all the advancements of technology and medicine and the, the, the information that we, we have access to, how can our testosterone levels be the lowest, the absolute lowest? It's crazy. And that's, I think, mostly because there's not enough information out there for us men that talks about how we can naturally increase our testosterone. It's, testosterone is, a lot, is, is one of those things that society seems to suppress. They seem to think if you have a lot of testosterone, then you're, you're aggressive and you're, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're a douchebag and all this stuff. But that's, not, that's our life, man. Our lifeline. We need to have testosterone. I, I work with thousands of men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s that come to me uh, at the beginning with low testosterone because I make them go check their testosterone levels using a testosterone kit or going to the doctor. 
or or some of them have been on TRT and they you know they were at like a hundred. Their testosterone levels are at about a hundred, one hundred and fifty, which will um, which that will allow you to get on TRT. Um, I've never done it before, so I don't know, but um, 150 and then they they get on TRT, they're taking all these pills or shots or whatever else they're getting up the butt or whatever they're doing, <laughs> the TRT that is. Um, and they get up to like 400, but then they stop because all they're doing is taking the, the, the testosterone replacement therapy. They're not doing all the other things that, you know, you need to do in order to naturally increase and change your lifestyle. So they're doing all of this stuff. And then after they come off of it, they drop all the way down or they can't get past that 400, which is still very low. You want to, listen, in our 40s, 50s, 60s, we want to get to our 700, 800. That's what I try to get my guys to. I try to get them to strive for that. You know, um, you know, when we're younger, like in our teens and early 20s, we're probably at about, a, you know, 800, 900, 1,000. Like your testosterone, that's not even a question. That's not like your kids, if you have young kids, teenagers or whatever, their testosterone levels are through the roof. <laughs> Right. So, but we want to keep, we want to get there. Like we want to naturally get there. We can't just be like, Oh, I'm at 400. Cause you still have some of these, some of these side effects. You want to get it as high as you possibly can. And you can do that. It's a hundred percent possible. You just have to do the right things and, and to do that naturally. So I've had guys who've gone on TRT, stopped at TRT because they can't get past the 400 mark, start to use my program and they naturally go up. They're up to like six. I don't, one guy's up to like six fifty, almost 700 from just using my program and not using the TRT, using the nutrition and the workouts and the recovery strategies, et cetera, et cetera. But nutrition is going to be the key. Nutrition's huge when it comes to testosterone. So let's kind of talk about the reason why I'm starting off with this is because when we talk about nutrition, our focus has to be all about testosterone. When you think about that, then that's going to make your nutrition, your eating, the foods you eat, um, why you're eating these foods much easier to understand because you need to understand nutrition, understand why you're feeding yourself the foods so that you understand uh, what, what those foods are doing for you and how important those foods are for you and that you're not going to veer off. Like, you know that, okay, these are the foods I shouldn't be eating or the drinks I shouldn't be drinking because it's going to affect my T levels. It's going to raise my testosterone killers, which I'm going to go through in a second. And these are the foods that are going to support my hormones, support my, uh, my testosterone, support my metabolism, support my health. So you need to understand that. So in this podcast, that's my goal is to help you guys understand what you're eating, why you're eating, what the ratio, macronutrient ratio is. And then I'm going to quickly go through some of the foods you should be eating, some of the foods you shouldn't be eating. And by the end of this episode, you should be like, I'm ready to go, man. I know. Thank you, Funk, for hooking me up. I totally understand what what I've been doing wrong, what I've been missing out. A lot of times you're missing out on some of the macronutrients. I'm throwing all this stuff out now, but I'll back us up and start from the beginning. But I just need to want you to understand because I want you to understand that when, if you're listening to this or watching this, by the time, maybe you want to get some, some, some uh, you know, a pad and paper out to write some of these things down. But this is truly going to be game changing if you're struggling with, with your diet, with your nutrition, with your eating lifestyle. So let's talk about... Um, Let's talk about testosterone killers first. So you remember I talked about testosterone being our number one male hormone, the hormone that we need to be focused on the most, but there are also other hormones that we need to stay away from, balance, or keep at arm's length, right? So one of the, one of the biggest testosterone killers are cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Um, we need a bit of cortisol, we need, especially in the morning. That's, that's what gets us up. That's what gets us going. We need that cortisol level in the morning, but what's happening is most of us men, have cortisol high, higher than our testosterone, and, and, it, and it lasts throughout the day because there's so much stress. The foods that we're eating that raise our cortisol levels. So like if testosterone is our superman, testosterone is our superman, it's our superhero. It's, it's, the, it's the thing that's going to make us <clears throat> as alpha and invincible as possible. <clears throat> Sorry, let me get some water here. Mm. Hydration is key to you guys. Uh, anyways, uh, it's going to be cortisol. Uh, that's one of those, one of our enemies. Okay. That's one of the enemies. We've got a lot of villains, right? Superheroes have villains. Well, testosterone is our superhero. Villain number one, cortisol. We've got to keep that low. Still need a little bit, but we got to keep that low. Second villain is estrogen. Estrogen is a female villain. It's a female hormone. It's the female hormone. It's something that, again, we need a little bit of, but we don't, we can't get in a lot of it. If we do, that leads to 
belly fat storage. That leads to blocking your uh, testosterone production. That leads to man boobs. If you have man boobs, you probably have a, you not probably, you, you have high estrogen levels. If you have a be- belly fat, it could be high cortisol and high estrogen. It could be both. It could be one. And again, that's, that's something we need to stay, we need to keep at arm's length. Again, a little bit, but what's happening is we have way too much female estrogen way too much cortisol. Insulin, we need to keep our insulin levels at bay. That's another testosterone killer. Another testosterone killer is inflammation. You hear about that all the time. A lot of the foods that we eat or the things that we do will inflame us. Inflammation blocks testosterone production along with other things like, you know, you get aches and pains and, and bloating and it's all inflammation. Um, the thyroid, we need to, we need to about, like, really focus on the thyroid. Thyroid is, is our metabolism booster. So we need to keep that thyroid um, balanced and high, right? So those are just five. There's more out there, but these are the ones that we really want to focus on specifically um, when I'm talking about your diet, nutrition, um, and, and some of the things you need to, to think about. Like, okay, I, I read something. You may be saying, oh, I read something about if I drink beer, estrogen levels are going to go up. Well, yes, 100%. If you drink beer, thinking that beer is a manly drink, but what's going to happen is going to raise your estrogen. When you raise your estrogen, that's why you get beer bellies, beer gut, right? Um, and, and man boobs, right? So again, I'm, I'm going a little bit further, but understanding that right now, when you're listening to this, your focus needs to be boosting your testosterone levels naturally through nutrition. That's it. Once you focus on that, the byproduct is going to be belly fat loss. The byproduct is going to be uh, weight loss. The byproduct is going to be more muscle. The byproduct is going to be better energy, less fatigue. Um, you know, your, your depression is going to go down if you have depression or you're going to keep it at bay. You're going to have more motivation, right? When you have more motivation to do things, that s- s- tends to help suppress the depression. Of course, there's a whole bunch of other things you need to do, but you know, you know, your sex drive is going to go up. Your, 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 uh, you know, your erectile, your, your, your erections are going to go up. All of these things happen when you focus on your, um, on your nutrition, and then keeping all those other testosterone killers at bay. So let's talk about nutrition. So the other thing about nutrition I want you to think about is one of the things that society happens. This is not your fault that you don't know this stuff because it's not out there. A lot of times, society is pushing a lot of, I call them feminizing diets, you know, because most women, like when, as, as a fitness person or in the industry, health industry, women buy a lot of stuff. They buy a lot of diets. They buy a lot of, you know, fitness stuff. So, you know, when you're putting your diets and stuff together, a lot of times they, and they market, a lot of times they're marketing to women, but that crosses over to men. So there's, there's a lot of diet, not, I'm not talking all diets. I'm not saying all diets. I'm just saying there are some like, you know, low carb, low fat, you know, South beach diet, weight watchers, a lot of those things can still flow over to the male side, but it's not, those diets don't focus on helping us boost our testosterone, especially low fat, low carb. Those are, those are huge. People are always, always saying, I heard, I heard I'm not supposed to eat carbs. Um, you know, the other diets out there, other fad diets like the keto diet, paleo diet, becoming a vegetarian. A lot of those diets out there do not help support our testosterone levels. You know, there's so many guys uh, who have joined, who joined my, my program, the over 40 alpha.com over 40 alpha.com program, get 30 days free by the way, but over 40 alpha.com uh, program. And <clears throat> But like, oh, I was doing keto and yeah, I lost a little bit of weight or I lost weight. But when I went to get my testosterone levels checked, they were super low. Or when I stopped taking doing keto because it was so hard to sustain, because remember, sustainability is huge too, then um, I bounced way, way back and my testosterone levels were low. Or paleo diet, same thing. Same things ha- happens with the paleo or any of those other diets that I talked about. So we have to focus more on a testosterone diet, right? A testosterone-based diet that supports our testosterone levels. And when you do that, that's when the magic happens. And the other thing I want to talk about quickly is sustainability. The reason why you don't want to jump on all these fad diets and all of these other things is, is you know, there, there's, also, there's so much restrictive restrictive diets out there and fad diets and do eat this and eat that and eat this and you can't eat this at this time and this is going to take you out of ketosis and all of this stuff, but you still don't understand, well, why am I eating these foods? All I'm thinking about is getting in, in and out of ketosis, but are these foods supporting my hormones? Are these, are, is, is this nutrition plan actually supporting my number one male hormone? 
yes, keto is great for younger people and, and women and that sort of thing. But for us men in our 40s, 50s, 60s, that's who this is geared towards. We cannot do those diets. They're not going to work and they're not sustainable. You should be able to be on a diet for a year, two years without even blinking. And, you know, maybe you may cheat a little bit, but you can eat, you can get right back on the path. If your diet is not sustainable, if you can't do it for two years, then you're, you're not, this is a wrong, you're on the wrong diet. You're, you're, you're too many fad diets, too much up and down. So when I talk about this diet, <clears throat> the best diet for, for men over 40 in 2020, it's a sustainable diet. It's a diet that will support your testosterone. It's a diet that'll balance those other hormones. It's a diet that'll increase your metabolism. It's a diet that'll help you lose weight, burn, burn fat, body fat, lose belly fat, lose weight. If that's what you need to do, build muscle because you're going to be feeding your body the right, um, you know, micronutrients, micronutrients. <laughs> I want you to remember that word. So, um, yeah, so let's, let's dive in. And again, just one, one last thing before we dive in, because listen, I know where you're coming from. I've been there before. When I was 39 turning 40, I was hitting the gym six days a week. I was doing, you know, bodybuilding style workouts, buys and tries, back and shoulders, that crap. I was doing long bouts of cardio, 45, 60 minutes of cardio, you know, on the stair climber or on the treadmill. And um, I thought I was eating healthy, low carbs, low, f I never even ate fat. So I didn't even want to bring, I can't even, I can't even say it was low fat. It was no fat because uh, ten, I'm 50 years old right now. So 10 years ago, it was all about don't eat fat, right? So that was all, all over the place. So it's like, okay, I'm not even going to eat fat. I don't even know what the right healthy fats are if there are healthy fats. So I wasn't, and I, listen, I was in the industry, man. I was, you know, I was posting videos on YouTube. So, you know, I was, I was kind of like, you know, always wore the t-shirt and kind of, I was big and puffy. I, you know, I was 40 pounds overweight. I was puffy, but because I was doing all the wrong things, not only the workouts, but specifically nutrition. I had no energy. I was depressed. I started drinking more and taking drugs and just, you know, partying too much. I, um, I was 40 pounds overweight. Um, you know, my girlfriend left me at that time because I couldn't satisfy her in bed. Literally, I couldn't satisfy her in bed. Okay, see you later. I'm gone. Um, you know, I just, I was getting memory loss. Like all of these things that I equated to getting older was actually my testosterone levels were low because when I went to the doctor to find out what was going on, he's like, Hey man, your testosterone levels are super low. Like, you know, you're 39 and they're, these are, these are testosterone levels of a 90 year old. Like what's going on with you? And, um, so right away we wanted to, to write the script for testosterone, um, replacement therapy. I'm like, nah, man, I'll, I'll, I'll figure this out on my own. That's okay. And um, that's what I did. That's where this whole thing spawned. You know, I started researching a lot about nutrition and talking to hormone specialists and nutritionists and, and what we, what's going on with our, our bodies as got men in our 40s and beyond. And, and that's when I created, you know, that's when I first started to, to create this, this uh, Meditest Boost diet plan or more testosterone-based diet plan, started to use it and you know, within six months, I was lean, I lost 40 pounds. I was lean and shredded. I had tons of energy. I had a, you know, morning wood. And, um, you know, my life has been great ever since, you know. I mean, even when I almost died a couple of years ago because of crypto organized pneumonia, when I had to take prednisone, if you've ever taken prednisone before, I hold this up because I usually have a pill bottle around here. Um, just to remind me of where I was, um, it's a testosterone killer. It's a hormone, like it just destroys you. It's one of the worst. Uh, med uh, one of the worst medication you can take, catabolic steroid. It's, it's the worst. It's horrible. Um, so my testosterone levels naturally went down, but because I was doing eating properly, uh, eating a testosterone, you know, uh, supporting diet, keeping all those other killers at bay as much as I could, even though I was taking this this pill. Once I got off of it, my testosterone levels increased three times, three times. I went from like 17 to 47. It was crazy. It was, my doctors couldn't even, couldn't even, they couldn't fathom what was going on. Um, and I just told them, it's just, I was, my lifestyle had been geared towards this. So um, I know where you're coming from. I'm not just talking out because I, I'm just kind of like, oh yeah, I just did all this research. It, I know not only once in the 30, you know, my late thirties, but again, you know, three years ago when I almost died was on my deathbed. So again, what I, what I want to talk about quickly is testosterone and knowing that 
you know, the one thing you need to understand is testosterone is produced, um, you know, it's produced obviously in the testicles, starts from the pituitary gland, goes all the way down into the testicles. Very important. But the precursor to testosterone production is cholesterol, good cholesterol. So in order for testosterone to be produced, you need cholesterol. That's very important to understand that because if you're not getting cholesterol, you're not getting testosterone production and you're losing, and that's, that's key. So, um, and I'm not talking about the bad cholesterol because people are like, oh, well, I went to the doctor and I have bad, high cholesterol. Yeah, but high bad cholesterol because you're eating shitty foods that will increase your cholesterol, your bad cholesterol. We need good cholesterol, which you're going to get from the foods that you eat, which will help produce your testosterone. Okay. So let's break this down, baby. Are you guys ready to do this? All right. So um, I, again, under, I, I think it was very important for me to, to, to just go through all of that, the primer, because you know, when I talk about anything in this podcast or have guests or whatever, really and truly, it's all about our testosterone levels. That's what it is, you know, specifically for us older men. And it's never too late. It's never too late. So let's get dive into it. Let's talk about macronutrients first, okay? This is going to be very important for you to understand because right now, all of the other diets out there don't support our testosterone because the macronutrient ratio breakdown is not, uh, is not conducive to, to testosterone production for us. Okay. So, um, macronutrients, if you don't know, macronutrients are carbs, fats, and proteins. Okay. That's pretty much it. And so when we break this down, okay, I'm going to start off with proteins. So proteins are not the protein. Okay. Proteins are probably the least, they're not probably proteins are the least important macronutrient when it comes to this type of diet for men over 40. Okay. It's extremely important because our bodies don't naturally produce protein. So we need an, we need a source of protein with every single meal that we eat. So as much as it's not the most important macronutrient, we still need a source of protein with every single meal that we eat. It's the, it's the baseline. It's the foundation of our nutrition protein. Okay, it's, it's obviously the building blocks. It's got the amino acids. It helps with muscle building, bone, everything. Our metabolic, metabolic uh, processes in the body. We need protein, okay? But here's the kicker. Too much protein. So in the past, in our early 20s, in our 30s, in muscle magazines, everywhere. I mean, even me, I'm, I'm even promoting my protein powder because I think it's important. Um, help you supplement to get protein with every meal. But... Um, what happens when you have too much protein, because protein has what's called the thermic effect of food. Well, all of them do, all macronutrients do, but has the thermic effect of food. But protein has the highest thermic effect of food. And when I say thermic effect of food, it means um, it takes protein, it takes the body more energy to digest protein and synthesize it. Okay, It takes the body energy, which in some cases is good. It's great because that's when, if you eat protein and the thermic effect is nine or 11, I believe, I can't remember off the top of my head, that means the body is, is using energy. Energy equals calories. So you're burning calories. That's why protein is such an important macronutrient for weight loss, right? People think of it on the opposite side from building, getting big and massive, but it's actually good for weight loss. But it takes the body so much energy to digest the protein that you eat. Now, but if you're eating protein, a lot of protein and eating it all the time, like a lot of diets will tell you to eat five, day, five times a day, six times a day, snacking, what have you. And then you're eating protein on top of that. Now, what's happening, this is research. This is not just me talking out. A lot of all the stuff I, I, I talk about is backed by science and research. But your protein is now what your body's doing. It's like, okay, I got to, I got to, especially at, at an older age. I'm not talking when you're younger. You're younger, your body can handle it. As we're older, it's a whole different story. So, body's trying to digest, then you're adding more protein, then you're adding more protein, you're adding more protein. The body's continually trying to digest. And what happens is because the body's using so much energy for a long period of time, your stress hormone goes up. That's cortisol. And who is cortisol? Cortisol is one of the villains for testosterone. So as your cortisol levels are rising because your body's, you know, taking so much energy to digest the, digest the protein. Again, I'm not talking young guys. Okay. You got to understand this is not you younger guys out there. This is for men in our forties, fifties, sixties, where bodies are totally different now. They're totally changing. Um, too much protein will have a negative effect. We still need protein. Extremely important. It's just not the number one uh, macronutrient. Okay, so that's that's key. Um, so th that's number one. 
Okay. And I'll, I'll break it. I'll break down the, the ratio, but I just want you to understand we still need protein one gram per body part or sorry, per, per weight, per <laughs> one gram per pound, right? Of lean protein, good protein, but um, it's not the most important. Okay. Second is the most important, which is dietary fats, healthy fats. That is the most important macronutrient when it comes to boosting our testosterone, when it comes to helping us lose weight, when it comes to helping us get rid of that belly fat. Because what did we talk about? Fats have cholesterol, and cholesterol plays an important part in producing testosterone. So it's very important that you, we're going to get cholesterol, the good cholesterol, from healthy dietary fats. Without fats, there is no testosterone. Without, the, without testosterone, there's no, you know, lean muscle. There's no all of the things that I talked about, weight loss, etc. So it's very critical. It's 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 fat is probably one of the most critical. Um, it is the crit, most critical macronutrients. We got to really think about how important fats are now. Not all fats are created equal. And this is very, very, very important for you to understand because I'm going to break down the, there's four different types of fats. Okay. So when I'm talking about healthy fats, this is where the type of fats will ensure that you get good cholesterol and bad, and opposed to bad cholesterol. Okay. So let's go through those quickly. The, the first fat you want to, so the first fat is polyunsaturated fatty acids. Okay. PUFA. And this is the fats that um, polyunsaturated fats are the things that are like that. Those are the ones that that will raise our omega six. Okay, so yes, omega sixes are great. Omega six are nine, but our bodies already have enough omega six. In fact, our bodies are totally. Uh, we should have we should have way more omega threes than we do omega sixes. But right now, in omega nines, right now our bodies, I think, are double of uh, uh, that of omega uh, three. Uh, omega-6, omega-9 is a double of omega-3, and we need to flip that script. It needs to be more, way more. That's why people are tell, people tell us you got to eat a lot of fat, you got to have, you know, supplement omega-3s, which yes, you probably do because we need to we need to unbalance that. We need to flip the script. So eating too much polyunsaturated fats is going to keep our omega-6 and omega-9s high. Omega-6 specifically very, very high, which we don't want. We want to stay away from that. So I try to keep my guys away from polyunsaturated fats, which are things like flax seeds, sunflower seeds, um, you know, uh, soybean oil, uh, corn oil, safflower oil, like all of those things. We need to keep that away. Okay. Um, it's just, and, and again, too much omega sixes, too much inflammation that increases inflammation, which will block your testosterone levels, which will add, you know, aches, pains, and all, all kinds of other stuff, health, health problems. So polyunsaturated fats, we just want to, we want to, um, again, in our, in our, in our world today, we need more omega threes. Okay, then we do omega sixes. Just most people don't have that, so staying away from polyunsaturated fats is key. Okay, um, you can have a bit, but I, uh, for me, listen. If we're talking about the best diet, and you want the best possible results and st to stay super healthy. Let's stay away from polyunsaturated fats for now. Second is trans fats. Of course, these are man-made fats that are generally hap uh, are generally um, through vegetable oil, which is hydrogenated. Of course, it's 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 all of the fats that, you know, when you go to, to fast foods, fried foods, it's, we, I don't even need to talk, tell you about how bad trans fats are. You already know it's, it's, this is common knowledge, but, um, you want to stay away from trans fats as well. That's, those are two. So polyunsaturated and trans fats are the ones that you want to stay away from. Next up are monounsaturated fats. Okay. So these are, these are good. This is MUFA, MUFA. We call it MUFA. And examples of no. So when I talk about um, monounsaturated fats, um, the studies show that people who have high levels of MUFA or their higher intake of MUFA will have elevated levels of testosterone. Huge, and that's because these are foods. These are the 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 uh, the, the foods that contain these are things like olive oil, um, avocado, salmon, olives, peanut oil. And again, this is huge. This is this is this is huge for us. This MUFAs, monounsaturated fat, fatty acids, are one of the fats that we need to eat more of. Um, and again, 
you'll see in the nutrition, when I talk about some of the foods, those are big foods there. They're going to have the cholesterol that we eat, the good cholesterol that's going to help with, with boosting our testosterone. The other good fat that we need are saturated fats. Again, I can go on on another podcast about you know diving into the fats, but saturated fats, it, <laughs> saturated fats are necessary for manufacturing testosterone. Okay, so we need those saturated fats, things that you're going to get from beef and pork and eggs and dairy and butter, grass-fed butter, you know, grass-fed beef, a lot of, and, and regular beef, pork, that sort of thing. A lot of people, and that's why when I talk about vegetarians, right, I talked, I threw that out there earlier. Um, ve- vegans and vegetarians, men have extremely, over the age of 40, have an extremely hard time increasing their free testosterone, which is what we want to focus on extremely hard time because they're not getting the fats that they need that you can get from animal proteins um, to help with that production. So you may lose weight, you may be skinny, but this is not about just losing weight. This is about increasing our testosterone levels as we get older. Because again, testosterone plays a major part in so many other things, right? So as a vegetarian, as a vegan, that's why I when someone like, for instance, somebody in my program came to me and asked me, hey, do you have vegetarian um, diet plan? And I'm like, absolutely not, because our goal here is to boost your testosterone naturally. And it's extremely hard for, to do that. So I don't, I don't, I don't, that's not something that I would provide you with because I'm, I'm not telling you to eat these foods at these times that will help with boosting your testosterone, which is going to help, um, you know, your entire life. So um, again, vegans are going to get upset. They're going to throw in these researches that, sh- that don't show that it's free testosterone, but it's just testosterone. But uh, believe me, again, I've got had vegetarians come into the program. They're not vegans, but vegetarians come into the program because they change, because whatever they were eating before wasn't working. So they changed to become a vegetarian and they feel better. For sure, you're going to feel better. You're, gonna, you're eating better foods, but lo- their testosterone levels were low as they, as they reported to me their energy levels were low and all those other things that come with it. So um, that's why with the fats, again, you're looking at the good fats, which are MUFA, monounsaturated fats, saturated fats. Those are good. Trans fats and polyunsaturated fats stay away from. Okay. So let's, let's kind of divide that. So let's move on to the carbohydrates. Again, another super important macronutrient on your plate. Okay, this is huge because like I mentioned before, like there were low fat diets, there're not lots of low carb diets. There's, you know, a guy sent me an email yesterday. He's like, "Yeah, you know, I I I'm, I'm going to the gym, I'm burning like 2000 calories a day, I'm only eating 1700 calories, which is brutal." But um specifically for a man who's 240 pounds and you know, I've got this big belly and I can't lose it and I'm I'm eating healthy, I'm eating chicken and vegetables and right off the bat that was like a red flag because he was going through all the things that he was doing, but not once did he say I'm eating carbs or not once he say I'm eating fats. So right off the bat, I sent him a message. I said, Hey, listen, I didn't hear you eating any carbs or fats. That could be the very first place we want to start. He's like, Oh, well I was told not to, I was told not to eat carbs, not to eat fats. I'm like, that's what happens. The misinformation for us guys in our forties, fifties, sixties, that people keep telling you don't eat carbs, don't eat carbs, don't eat carbs, don't eat fats, don't eat fats, don't eat fats. Well, we need the carbs and fats. They're the two most important macronutrients in a diet that's going to support our testosterone. So we need to have carbs. It's just the right type of carbs we need to have. Because what happens when you, you know, when you cut your carbs, what's the first thing that happens? You start to lose energy because carbs, we need, our body needs carbs for energy, glucose for energy. So you're, you're cutting out carbs, you're feeling sluggish, you're slow, you don't have a lot of strength. You know, you get, get headaches. You're like, wow, what's happening? Why, why is this, right? And um, the other thing about carbs is that what happens when your body, because this is, this, this is this, think about this. When your body doesn't get the glycogen, the glucose, the carbs that it needs, it perceives that you're in a, sta- sam- a, a famine. It perceives that you're, you're starving yourself. It per- everything starts to shut down. It's like, oh man, I'm not getting, I'm not getting the carbs that I need for energy. So I'm going to slow everything down. I'm going to slow down testosterone production. I'm going to slow down my metabolism. I'm going to hold on to the fat, whatever fat that you're eating, I'm going to hold on to that for energy, right? I'm going to burn the proteins that you're putting into your body. And so I'm just, this is just, you know, layman's terms, but your body's literally going into survival mode. 
when you don't have those carbs. And so instead of your, you, you thinking, okay, well, if I'm not eating carbs, why am I still fat? I don't eat carbs. Why don't I have energy? I don't eat carbs. Well, that's why your body's literally going into starv starvation mode, survival mode, famine mode, which means everything slows down, right? Everything slows down. It may, it's gonna, it may even stop all the necessary functions that you're going to need for survival. It's huge. So when your carb intake begins to dip, your thyroid shuts down as well. Okay, this is, again, science. Your thyroid production shuts down. I talked about the thyroid. Thyroid's all about metabolic rate, right? When your thyroid shuts down, your metabolic rate shuts down. You need the thyroid to go kick in so that metabolism keeps going so you're burning. So that it's so important. Carbs are so important. But if there's the right carbs and the wrong carbs, so I want to talk about those two. There's two types of carbs. There's complex carbs and simple carbs. Now, for me, when I first got into this industry and I'm thinking, okay, is it simple carbs that is good or is it complex carbs? <laughs> I don't remember. Well, I just, all I say is S, simple starts with the letter S. Sugar start with, with the letter S. Sugar's bad, simple's bad, okay? Complex carbs are good. That's how I just, that's how I, I do it. You may have a different, you may be able to just, I mean, now I know, but I'm talking about when I, when I began this and, and for you listening to this right now, because I'm throwing all this information at you, you may be like, okay, well, so was it simple that was good or was it complex that was good? I don't know, man. Simple, sugar, bad. Complex, good, okay? So complex carbs, these are the good carbs. Now, um, these are the carbs that are going to, um, that are harder to break down for the body, but it won't rapidly release glucose into the bloodstream so it won't spike your insulin levels um, and it won't give you that crash. That's why it's really good. They're high in um, energy. They're good in complex carbs, have fiber, uh, fibrous carbs. These are good carbs. So we're talking about things like sweet potato, quinoa, um, brown rice, uh, basmati rice is good, uh, steel cut oats, Ezekiel bread, Ezekiel bread. You know, obviously there's starchy vegetables like squash and pumpkin and that sort of thing. Those, that's, those are the good carbs. Those are carbs that you can eat um, on a daily basis and know that you're feeding your body the right micronutrients, which are in those carbs. Too. We'll talk about that in a second. And then, um, so th th those are good carbs. Okay? And you're going to get some from, from vegetables and fruits. But what I'm talking about, like the, 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 you know, the, the potato, sweet potatoes, even white potatoes sometimes after a workout is good. Um, you know, basmati rice, brown, black rice, brown rice, those are the ones that, you know, um, stay away. I always tell people stay away from pasta um, as much as possible. But uh, again, that's another podcast episode. And then there's the simple carbs. These are the ones, you know, the simple carbs, man. It's the cookies, the crackers, the processed foods, the cupcakes, the muffins, you know, the donuts, the, the white bread, the white pasta, the baked goods, the cakes. You know, you go into Starbucks and you think you're having a muffin in the morning, a healthy muffin. That's, that's the simple carbs. That's destroying your, your testosterone. Stop eating those muffins at the, at the coffee shop thinking that they're healthy, right? The, a lot of these things. So, um, so that, that's, that's, that's kind of the, the, the highlight of the three macronutrients. So now you're thinking, oh, okay, well, Funk just went through the macros. He just told me that, you know, fats and carbs are more important than protein. Well, what's the ratio? So um, I wrote this down. This is what I tell my, my guys. This is what's working for my guys. I've got men who've been in my program for more than 12 months. I'm talking thousands of men who use this nutrition plan that's simple. And it gives everything you need in regards to, um, you know, the, the, the macros, which will contain the micronutrients, which we'll get to in a second. But if we look at this right now, this is kind of like the, this is like a plate, okay? I call these my balance plates. This is a perfect plate, a balance plate. If your daily intake of the macronutrients is 40, it should be 40% fat, 40% carbs, 20% proteins, and then vegetables and fruits are, are, you can go crazy with those. You should be always, so on your plate, you should always look at your plate and go, where are my fats? Where are my carbs? Where are my proteins? And where are my vegetables or fruits? Or like if it's a smoothie, then you want to make sure that you got, you know, your, your, your almond butter, you know, your steel cut oats, your protein, your whey protein that I just showed you. Um, and, uh, you know, some vegetables, maybe kale, maybe blueberries, like strawberries, whatever it is. And then you, you smoothie that up and you know that you have everything here. We don't really focus on counting calories. Okay. That's, it's, it's more focused on the ratio. Now, when I give you this ratio, 
40 fats, 40 carbs, 20 proteins and, um, and vegetables. That's not like, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, basically you're looking at about 20 to 25% protein per day, 40 to 50% carbs, 25 to 40% fats. Um, actually more, more like 35 to 40% fats because it all depends on what the goal is for that month or what you're doing. So for instance, in, in my over 40 alpha.com program, the nutrition plan is very basic. It's what I'm talking to you right now. It starts with 40, 40, 20. That's basically the, the starting point, the foundation. Month one is fat loss. We're trying to lose as much body fat as possible. So month one, well, you probably use a 40, 40, 20 because that's, we want to get that foundation, get the right foods in with the right micronutrients in, feeding the body so that testosterone production increases, metabolism increases, and, and fat burning and body fat burning uh, increases as well, calorie burning, et cetera. Then month two is a muscle building month because one of the key things that happens to men over 40 is sarcopenia, which is a natural loss of muscle. Well, in order to build muscle and ensure that we're building muscle, we need more carbs. You may think, oh, we need more protein. No, no, we need more carbs, right? That's going to feed the muscles when they break down so they get the, the, what they need to grow. So on, in that month, we may bring our fat intake down a little bit, maybe 5%, increase our carb and keep protein at bay. Protein never changes. It just stays at bay. And then in month three, it's our body shred. This is when we're trying to shred everything. We've got, you know, we get one month of body fat burning, one month of muscle building with body fat. Now we want to shred it out. And month three, where we would now lower our carb and take a little bit, maybe to 35, increase our fats and keep our proteins at bay. So that's kind of like how you can sl slowly play with the numbers. It's not hard copy 40, 40, 20. You can play with those numbers, but that's a great starting place for that, right? It's a perfect starting place. My phone keeps ringing, so bear with me. I don't know if you can hear that, but anyways, so I talked about the macronutrients, but here's the thing. The most important part of a nutrition plan are the micronutrients, okay? That's where everyone misses everything. The big miss in nutrition is people keep talking about macros, 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 if your macro fits, whatever, whatever, and they totally miss the micronutrients, which are the vitamin and minerals that are, <clears throat> that are contained in the foods that we eat. That's what's going to help with balancing our hormones. That's, the, that's what's going to help with ensuring that we're getting the right minerals and vitamins into the body so our body works at, a, at, at uh, as effective as possible. And so a lot of most diets out there, I don't even, I don't, you never hear anyone talking about micronutrient diet or micronutrients, right? They, you don't, it's just not sexy enough. And, and the other thing about what I just talked to you about in regards to the ratios in men over 40, 50, 60, the reason why you don't see this testosterone diet or see all of this stuff, it's not sexy enough. It's very simple. 40, 40, 20, like that's too, it's, it's so simple that it's like, okay, I don't know. I can't get a hook out of this. What's the hook? You know, like keto, you get into ketosis and blah, blah, blah. Paleo, you only eat these type of foods, blah, blah, blah. South Beach, what, you know what I mean? There's low carb, you only have low, you know, low carbs, low fat. Like there's always a hook. This diet, there's no hook, right? So it's like, ah, yeah, forget the men over the 40, 50, 60. They're, they're supposed to be fat anyway. Leave them alone. Nah, man, we are the, we are the one, we are the, we are the kings of our kingdom. We're the ones our kids are looking up to us. Our family's looking up to us. When things happen, we're the ones that we're looking, especially as we get older, we're the matriarchs. matriarchs. We need to be in the best shape we possibly can be. So nutrition is going to be the key right now. And so yes, macronutrients, knowing what type, the ratio of macronutrients are important, but now let's talk about the micronutrients. Why are we eating these foods? What are the foods on a food list? Not again, in, a, in another podcast, we can talk about the foods, the best foods to eat and the foods to stay away from, although I will floss over it um, as we go through this. I'm just being aware of time. Um, but again, micronutrients are the vitamins and minerals. Okay, So a lot of times our foods, unfortunately our foods these days don't have the highest amount of micronutrients, um, you know, vitamins and minerals because of the way the food is processed and made. And, and so like compared, comparative to like 30, 40 years ago or you know, when I go, when I travel to, to different countries where the food is fresh and it's tasty and it's good, the, the, the micronutrients are probably higher or definitely higher than they are here. So um, when I talk about micronutrients, let me just go, th go through some of the big ones. I'm not going to dive too deep. Again, I'll have another podcast episode that dives into micronutrients. I just need you to get the full 
you know, I want you to get the, the, the over, the overview of this, right? Um, so zinc, zinc is a very, uh, it's an important mineral to optimize your testosterone levels, right? Zinc is, um, a large amount of zincs will help with, well, your sex life, but also help with supporting your testosterone production. So the foods that you're going to eat, and again, I'm not going to dive into how much zinc or what have you, not on this episode, because then we'll be here forever. But zinc, just think about, these are the ones I want you to think about. Okay, so the micronutrients, so zinc, you know, great, you can get zinc in, in grass-fed beef, oysters, crab, lobster, but that's a, that's a big one in regards to testosterone. And vitamin, oh, you can also get in pumpkin seeds, meat, etc. Another one is vitamin D. Now, vitamin D, listen, this is more of a sunshine uh, vitamin. It's, it's actually one that we have access to, maybe not on a daily basis, depending on where you live, but we have access to vitamin D by just going outside and standing inside. I do this every day. I kind of gr do grounding. I ground myself. I'll stand outside, look at, uh, close my eyes, look at the sun, and just ground myself. Try to listen for things that are going on so I can be, get grounded, be present, but at the same time getting a ton of vitamin D because we are vitamin D deficient, massive. But vitamin D, again, is, is help, uh, helps to ensure that adequate testosterone is coming through, specifically um, through a study that was done by the Hormone and the Metabolic Research Journal. Um, you know, healthy libido, better sperm production, better testosterone production, all, all due to high vitamin D. So, um, you know, again, vitamin D can also be found like orange juice and salmon, um, you know, egg yolks as well. Um, I try not to have people drinking a lot of juices, um, but, you know, you can get it from there, right? Um, selenium. Selenium is a root, uh, a root uh, mineral. It's a, it's a good, it's, it's awesome. Selenium, again, huge for uh, testosterone production. Um, it helps keep the metabolism working properly as well, uh, which will help promote testosterone production. Um, and you're going to find uh, selenium in things like Brazil nuts, yellowfin tuna, halibut, uh, sardines, grass-fed beef, um, turkey, right? Um, another one's vitamin A. So vitamin A is really good for, again, for the, tes the testes, right? Which is where our testosterone gets produced. So um, when you have a lot of vitamin A, your testosterone levels will begin to increase. When you don't have enough, they decrease. So you're going to get vitamin A in things like butternut squash, sweet potato, kale, carrots, liver, spinach, dried ap apricots, butter, grass-fed butter, of course, egg whites, or egg yolks, sorry, and broccoli. Um, the, this next one, number one, man. Number one in my heart. This is it. Magnesium. This is huge, baby. Magnesium is a mineral that plays a critical role in keeping our testosterone levels going, but also with muscle building, um, you know, regulating, uh, you know, our immune system. But it's huge, man. I mean, magnesium is one of the another one of those um, uh, supple or vitamin vitamins minerals that we don't have enough of, right? It's a micronutrient that we don't get enough of. A lot of us are magnesium. Um, we don't get enough of magnesium, okay? Um, so things like bananas, beans, kale, almonds, dark chocolate, yogurt, um, you know, that's perfect uh, foods that will have magnesium. There's lots of other foods as well, but I'm just going through, you know, just quickly going through this. Vitamin C, that's another big, uh, you know, help helps with, with testosterone production. Um, you know, uh, again, vitamin C, you know, you get it in fruits, um, calcium's big as well. Um, calcium's big. Boron, that's another one. Boron's another tes uh, testosterone booster. And a lot of a lot of others. Listen, it's not just about it's not just about um, you know boosting testosterone. It's also about keeping the estrogen levels low. Like for instance, when I talked about vitamin A, vitamin A also keep helps to decrease estrogen levels. Which when your estrogen levels are low, your testosterone production get, will produce more effectively. So it's not just about testosterone production, testosterone production, a lot of the um, vitamins and minerals, the micronutrients are also will help with keeping those other, you know, estrogen at bay and other, other, other killers of testosterone. So that's key. So, you know, again, I just threw out, I just threw a few out there. Um, some of the key ones, zinc, vitamin D, uh, selenium, uh, magnesium, you know, those are big ones. Vitamin B, I haven't even talked about, throw that on there, boron, and, you know, think about those. But the, the, the reason why, you know, the reason why you eat the specific foods that are in um, a list, right? So if we looked at a list of, okay, so Funk, you told me about, 
the, the, the ratio of macronutrients, fats, carbs, proteins, 40 fat, 40 carb, 20 protein, and vegetables. And listen, a, a lot of people say, well, what about the calories? How many calories do we need? How many do we need? If you just focus on eating three times a day, lunch, sorry, breakfast, lunch, dinner, your plates are filled with, you know, fats, carbs, proteins, and, and vegetables. And don't, don't, you don't have to like, they don't, they're not talking about small little tiny portions. I'm talking about big plate sizes, three times a day, specifically those carbs. It's all you're going to need. You know, maybe if you're two, uh, you know, 200 plus pounds, you may need 2,500 calories, you know, 2,000, 2,500 calories, um, for, for weight loss. Again, I don't, I don't, I try to simplify things so that A, they're sustainable and there's no hurdles. When you start doing the calorie counting, the hurdles come in because then you're thinking calories in, calories out, but it's not just about calories in, calories out. Because if you're not getting the right calories, if you're suppressing yourself of the right calories, like, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, you know, most of my calories comes from fats, proteins, and some vegetables. You're not getting those carbs. Well, now you have no energy. Now you still have belly fat because even though you have calories that, um, you're, you're getting less calories than you're burn, or you're, you're you know you're you're taking in less cal more less calories than you're burning. It's not the right calories. It's not the nutrient dense foods that are going to help your body to to metabolize, help your body to function properly, so that you're burning the belly fat instead of holding on to it. Your body's not in starvation mode where everything's slowing down. So it's very. That's why it can get very. For, for the regular person, for, for you know, someone who's, who hasn't really d dove into the nutrition portion of it or eating the right foods, that can become overwhelming. And that can just like, oh, you know, this is too, too, too comp complex. But it's not when you just, all you need to do is just do this. Just put, make sure, okay, I've got a little half of avocado. I've got a sweet potato here. I've got, uh, you know, uh, chicken, chicken, chicken legs, if you want. And then a big massive amount of salad or or spinach or kale or whatever it is and uh, you're doing that three times a day and you're going to be fine right um so let's let's talk finally about let's talk about last two things three things i'm gonna i'm gonna go through hydration of course you know drinking is super super important um i already have a um a a a uh, I already have a podcast episode just on hydration, but again, when it comes to testosterone, hydration is critical. You know, specifically waking up in the morning right away, something you can do right away to get everything starting to flow is 16 to 32 ounces of water right off the bat. As soon as you wake up, boom, you're downing it. Before you do anything, that's that's how that's how you start your day off, and then you start, and then you're drinking water all the time. Yes, guys, you're going to be peeing all the time. That's just the that's just life when you're drinking water and you're getting hydrated the right way um you know dehydration is a killer of testosterone you know it tends to mass testosterone elevation if you're dehydrated so the more so the less water you're you're drinking again it's affecting your testosterone levels and again I, if you look back at one of my i don't i can't remember what episode it is but go back to the hydration episode and 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 and, and listen to that one that's a, that's a that's a big one so let's talk about before we go, let's talk about two things. Last, the last two things. Hold on, I'm gonna the water. Last two things is one. What are those testosterone boosting superfoods? Well, I don't want to call them superfoods. What are those testosterone boosting foods? There's a massive list. Again, when you go to over40alpha.com and you join my uh, my my program, 30 days absolutely free. One of the things I give you is a is a list. And I tell you, just pick your go-to carbs, your go-to fats, your go-to proteins and vegetables you can eat that you're going to eat this week and make it simple. Don't try to pick a, try to change everything. Just these are the carbs I'm going to eat this week, two or three. Here are the two or three proteins I'm going to eat. Here are the two or three fats I'm going to have. And then, you know, I'm going to eat vegetables like crazy. But here are some of the foods that, and again, I'm not going to go into this. We're going to have another episode where we're literally going to drop, go down to like the 20 foods. I'm going to break down research behind why the foods are the best. But right now I'm going to throw these out here. Coconut oil, very good food that can help preserve your testosterone levels. Raw nut butter, great fat. Again, um, it's got, it's, 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 um, 
It's another great fat process with nut butters. It does contain a little bit more polyunsaturated fats, but you don't want to eat too much of that. So like cashew butter, almond butter, walnut butter, very good specifically in moderation. Brazil nuts, I told you about that before. It's got selenium. It's great for boosting uh, testosterone. Brazil nuts, you just take a handful. That's all you need. You can eat that with your with whatever food you're eating. That could be your fat. Um, extra virgin olive oil. I use that on everything. I put that on my salads. I put that on my rice. I put that on my salmon. I put that on everything because it's going to give me that fat intake that I need. Extra virgin olive oil should be one of the, should be a bottle right now in your pantry. Avocados. This is my big, it's my go-to man. Avocados is my go-to. 10 grams of, of fat per half avocado. It's amazing. The monounsaturated fats that you're going to need. I eat avocado all the time. Like literally I'm always buying avocados because you can't have them sit or they'll go bad. And it's just part of all the meals that I eat or even my smoothie, I'll throw in an avocado. Grass-fed butter, huge, man, huge saturated fats, which again, help with testosterone production, specifically peak testosterone production, but grass-fed butter, not margarine, not, I can't believe it's not margarine, not regular butter, not, uh, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever healthy butters are there, grass-fed butter. You can get that almost anywhere now. Get that grass-fed butter. I put that on everything as well. I put that on everything. Love it. Sweet potatoes. There's a carb that you you want to have. The car, That's a carb that's going to have all the micronutrients that you need. So it's perfect. It's a, sweet potatoes are perfect carb. Beets. Beets are amazing. Another um, carb that can drive up or or vegetable. I, 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 use that, I put that in my vegetable. I wouldn't eat beets as my carb. I would eat that as my vegetable. But here's the thing about beets. It's also good to decrease estrogen, right? I remember I talked about some of the micronutrients in the foods that, that – that it's not only boosting your testosterone, but it's minimizing um, the, the 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 testosterone killers like estrogen. So beets are great. Eat, eat beets like crazy. Um, black beans are really good. I don't eat a lot of beans because they're not good for my stomach, but the, the black beans have the zinc. Again, associated with testosterone production. So it's a good food. Pumpkin seeds, really good. You don't want a lot of them, but again, it's a f- food rich in zinc. Um, white button mushrooms, another great vegetable that you have. There's tons of mushrooms out there. Look for the white button mushrooms, white tip mushrooms. Spinach, spinach, fantastic source of magnesium. Um, you know, you can't, I can't have enough spinach. I eat it all the time. Like almost every day I have a spinach salad or I'll grab a bunch of spinach and, and, and put it in a pot and just boil it and throw it in uh, with my food. Broccoli, another beautiful, um, you know, uh, again, broccoli is one of those, one of those foods that will suppress your estrogen right? Again, which is good, right? This is huge. Estrogen levels tend to increase as we age. We need to decrease that. Eggs, of course, whole eggs, full eggs, great cholesterol. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the cholesterol that you have to be concerned with when it comes to heart health. So this got the good cholesterol that we need for producing testosterone. Wild caught salmon. I eat a ton of salmon all the time. I actually eat sashimi all the time, but wild caught salmon is good. Yellow fin tuna, huge, very, very, very good with the vitamin D. And we talked about vitamin D, Get it from the sun. You can also get it from yellowfin tuna. Grass-fed bison, grass-fed beef in general will give you uh, the B12, which is good for testosterone, zinc, which is good for testosterone, fats that you can get from that. Um, well, you're not going to get a lot of fats from grass-fed stuff. You can get it from regular um, regular steak and beef and you know, chicken's always good as well. But those are kind of like, I just threw out those. Again, I'll have another episode where we just talk about the food so you can really get a feel for what those foods are doing. But Again, those are foods that you you should be eating. Now, some of you may be saying, okay, well, Funk, listen, I eat those foods. I have I have grass-fed butter at home. I eat avocados. Funk, I have grass-fed beef. What are you talking about, man? I'm still I still have a belly. Well, because there's also foods that are crushing your testosterone levels. So even though you're eating those foods, it's not like a okay, because I'm eating these foods, I can eat these foods. No, it's don't eat these foods. Only eat these foods. And there's a list. Like I just went through small, a small list. There's tons of delicious, amazing, manly foods that you can eat that taste great, that you're not restricting yourself. You're not only eating broccoli and chicken, right? This, this is, but you've got to stay away from these because these are killing your testosterone. They're increasing your estrogen. They're increasing your cortisol. Again, I'm going to go through these. I'm going to have another separate podcast just talking about the foods to stay away from and why we need to stay away from those. So, um, you know, cheese, milk, and dairy. So this is a big one, you know, milk specifically, 
uh, will increase. Dairy products account for 60 to 80 percent of total estrogens, right? So we got to get rid of a lot of the a lot of the milk. You know, um, so you can have like um, uh, oh, what's that? Like the yogurt with protein. What is it called? Again, God, I don't even remember. Um, you can have a small amount of, amount of yogurt. Um, you know, some cheeses are good. Some feta cheese is good, but you know, a lot of that other cheese, cottage cheese, and too much milk. That's going to boost your t- your estrogen levels. And again, um, so you want to stay away from from milk. You know, we're 40, 50, 60 year old men, man. We're not little kids. We don't need milk, right? Um, uh, polyunsaturated vegetable oils, salad dressings, right? So, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I, I eat salad funk, but I throw a bunch of salad dressing on it. Well, there it is. You know, polyunsaturated vegetable is a lot that they hide in salad dressing. So we need to make our own salad dressing or use olive oil, you know? Flax seeds, I talked about flax seeds before. A lot of times, and in, in, in when it comes to healthy eating, that you always see flax seeds, flax seeds. Well, that's not healthy for us guys, right? That's not health, healthy for us men. We need to stay away from the flax seeds. There's other hemp seeds that we can use and other seeds, but let's stay away from that. Uh, mint, mint is uh, like peppermint and that sort of thing. That that also reduces your testosterone. Also, there's some studies that show that. I don't. I, I try to keep people away from mint as much as possible. Um, not saying that you got to stay away completely, but you know, if if there's something that's going to affect my testosterone, I'm not going to play around with it. I'm not going to kind of. I'm just going to stay away from it completely. Uh, this is the biggest one here. Um, I talked about it before when I started the podcast. It's alcohol, man. Like beer specifically. All alcohol, but beer 100%, man. Beer is is an estrogen booster. Like you would think that, you know, the way they promote beer and the way they market beer, it's all about, uh, you know, um, you know, making us manly and that sort of thing. But Man, it's 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 not only does it increase cortisol, but it also increases estrogen. So that's why you get the beer belly, right? Stay away from beer. Don't drink alcohol until you get to where you want to be, right? Don't drink alcohol until you get to where you want to be. Soy products, huge, man. You got to stay away from soy products, soy beans, soy milk, soy um, soy protein, uh, soy sauce, like all of that. Get that off that list, man. Get it off that list. Um, again, it, it interacts with our testosterone production and, and that's, you know, something we don't want. Trans fats. I talked about that before, you know, stay away from the pizzas and the cookies and the crackers and fast foods and then sugar. Well, this is not even a no brainer. Sugar is one of the hardest things to, to, to stop. It's addictive, but we got to get rid of sugar. It causes, not only does it cause heart disease and, 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 and increase estrogen, but it kills our testosterone. Mechanically enhanced meat, like, you know, packaged meats. Um, you know, those things that you buy at the, you know, sausages and deli meat and, and, and some bacon, you can still get in that bacon, you know, good, good turkey bacon or what have you, but, but stay away from that kind of stuff. Chemically enhanced meat, chocolate, right? I know a lot of people love chocolate, but of course, you know, it's, it's got too much sugar, it lowers our testosterone, dark chocolate. Good, but you're not eating a lot of dark chocolate. Microwave popcorn. That's another one that's, uh, has a certain, uh, certain acid in that's found in the lining. It's the lining more than anything, right? <laughs> Microwave popcorn, it's more about the lining <laughs> that suppresses our testosterone. What's in the lining of the bag? Um, pure fluorinatanioic acid. <laughs> Anyways, in conclusion to this episode, um, let's just get back to why we're here. We're here to help you with your nutrition, right? We're here to eat three times a day. Make sure every meal has carbs, fats, proteins, and vegetables on it. If you, just to start, let's just start. Make sure that you're eating foods that are supporting your testosterone and staying away from foods and drinks that um, suppress your testosterone and boost all the other bad uh, hormones that are killing your testosterone right? Again, three times a day, there's a food list, drink as much water as you can. Once you start making those changes, you're going to find that your your metabolism is going to increase, your energy is going to increase, you're going to lose weight, you're going to lose belly fat, you're going to build lean muscle, you're going to, you're going to, your, your erection in the morning, your morning wood's going to be huge, right? You're going to, your, your, your motivation is going to be there. Like, it's all about the foods. We, you guys know this. You always know this. People say 80% of it, it's nutrition, 20% workouts. I, I'm huge at that. 80 to 90% is nutrition. If all you did, like, listen, a few months back, because I had a knee injury, I could not work out. So all I had was my nutrition. I focused on nutrition. I ended up losing 40 pounds because I was 40 pounds overweight because of the injury. It's a long story, but we'll get on that another day. Um, 
it was crazy. But I, all I did was eat healthy and nutrition and focus on my nutrition. I lost that weight and still stayed lean and still stayed muscular. It wasn't just losing weight. Yeah, I did some push-ups and some ab stuff because it was a knee injury, so I couldn't do any like cardio-based stuff, metabolic training. But I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. That's the number one thing. If you focus on that, the workouts are there. But if you focus on nutrition, but a nutrition plan that that will that will help with metabolism and help with your testosterone, um, and 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 give you the foods that will support your hormones and balance those hormones and insulin and 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 keeping estrogen and cortisol back and testosterone high, et cetera, inflammation down, your life is going to change. Your life is 100% going to change. So thank you so much for being on this. If you need a program, go to over40alpha.com, over40alpha.com. You're going to get 30 days free. Right off the bat, go to phase one. That's our fat loss phase. I'll give you the nutrition plan. I'll show you and coach you through with videos on you know, the, 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 the foods to choose from. So you'll have a list of foods. Obviously you'll have the workouts or all follow along workouts, but you can go right now and you can download, sorry, my, my app. You can literally download the app right here. Oops. I can't even see. You can download over 40 shred app, download the app. And here's the brotherhood right here. I know you can't see this. It's kind of weird to, and uh, you go to phase one, Phase two, so you can download the Over 40 Shred app or go to over40alpha.com. This is free to download. You get a free uh, start. You go to phase one, there's a welcome, there's quick start, there's mindset, recovery, there's the nutrition plans, all here. There's videos, you download the nutrition books. The workouts are all like phase one, day one. Your workouts are there, you got the you know, the, the warm up, you got the workouts are all follow along workouts, everything you need. I talk about recovery, sleep, all of that stuff. So go, you can either go to over 40 alpha.com, sign up 30 day free trial, go get it, go get it done. Or you can go to over 40 shred, download that on Google or iTunes. And, um, you can start from just using the app. You'll get access to the Facebook group, weekly coaching, everything you need. So over 40 alpha.com, or you can download that app over 40 shred. Thank you so much for being here with me. You guys are amazing. I love you. This is the very first video that we have, the video podcast, or may, there may be, maybe episode 29 will be a video too um, when we talk about magnesium, but this is huge, man. This is great. Thank you for being here with me. Things will change. Video camera will probably be in a different way, lighting, whatever. This is kind of like, you know, day one of the new era. Uh, it's 2020. And uh, my goal here is to help you get in the best shape of your life. That's it, man. I want to help you get into the best shape of your life. I want to create over 40 alpha men who can take control of their life healthy and become the men that we need to be. Anyways, thank you so much. And I'll, uh, I'll see you on the other side. Get it done.